All right, we're going to be using the XLOOKUP function in Google Sheets to look up values from another table. And I'm Adam Steinfurth from SheetsHelp.com. Between these examples and the templates that you can get copies of, you can learn everything you need to know about Google Sheets. So in our example here, what we want to do is we want to take Sally, so that's the name of the sales rep. You can see it over here in this table. You want to look her up in this table and then return the region that she's from. And let's type in the function. So it's called X lookup. And once you do the opening parentheses, you'll, you will get the help here that tells you what it's looking for first. So the search key is just, hey, what am I looking up? All right, so what we're going to be looking up is Sally. So we'll just give the function E6. And then it's asking you where to look it up. All right, so where to find that name. That's called the lookup range, and that's A7 through A10. Now, if you're doing this in a long column, you're going to be copying it down. You can fix the row values. So you would do A7, you would put a dollar sign on the seven, dollar sign on the 10. I can leave it like that for this example. I don't need to because I'm not copying it down. But if you're having problems with the function, that may be what's happening. And the next parameter that it needs is the result range. So where is the result that I want to return? And we'll say that's in B7 through B10. Close this off. And there we go. Sally is in the east region. Pretty easy to use. You don't have to count columns with XLOOKUP like you did in VLOOKUP. Let's go to the next example here. And uh, let's just type in a name ahead of time. But let's type in an incorrect name. So we'll type in Ryan because I know that's not going to be found. And, but we're going to create this function in a way that it's going to give you a custom message if it's not found. So the search key will be E23. Lookup range will be the same. So will the return range. So we'll go through that quickly. But now we're going to do a custom message if there's a missing value. So you need to put it in quotes because this is going to be a string. And we'll just say value not found. All right, close that off. We're done. And there we go. We've used Ryan, but the value is not found. So if we change it though to Jim, it's going to return north. All right, so this is a pretty flexible function and it can give your user helpful error messages. Next thing that we can do here, and this is something that the old VLOOKUP could not do, and this is to return more than one column. So we'll write out the function again. We'll look for Richard. The lookup range stays the same, so it's just the one column, the column that would have his name in it. But the result range, all you have to do is just extend it, all right, to the number of columns that you want. So if you want both of these, your range is going to be B46 through C49. So that letter is changing because the range is encompassing two columns. And we can uh, be done with this function now. We'll hit enter, and it returns two values that belong to Richard. So when you look to the left, uh, he was in the south region and his specialty is aluminum. Okay, so you don't have to do two X lookup functions here. The value in F48 is being written by the function in E48. Okay, so it's creating an array as a return result. So make sure that this cell, in this case, F48 is empty because if there was something there, you would get an error. So let's just put a three there and then you get this error in the function. It's saying, hey, I tried to expand the result, but something was in the way. So we'll just delete that. And there we go. So the fourth, fourth example that we have is dealing with an inexact match. And the example here is a percentage. So we made this, this is just a grading scale, right? So if you get, an, in this case, an 87 on a test, that doesn't match 80 and it doesn't match 90, right? So we have an inexact match. So we're going to tell it how to deal with this. So let's write the function. We're going to be looking up the grade, which the lookup range and the result range on this one. So we'll do column B first, and then the result range is going to be A. And we don't need a message for it not being found, so just do another comma. And the match mode is negative one because we want to, when we get to 90, the, it's not a match. So we're okay with an inexact match. And we want to return the next one down because we want to return a B. And we'll just specify that we want to look from the top down. So we hit enter 
and it gives the correct result of a grade of B. So this next example, I'll just leave it typed in here already. And what it's showing you is the changing the parameter of the search mode. So if you go from the top down and you're looking for Randall, it's going to return a 78. Change that to a one, it returns a 78. But if you want to search the list from the bottom up, it's going to return a different number for Randall. So we'll change this to a negative one and it gives an 82. Both of the answers are right, depending on what you want to do with the list. So let's say this is a chronological list. The last entries are in the bottom and you're trying to return the last grade. You want a negative one for the search mode. All right, in this next video, we're going to show you how to create a column of random numbers that automatically sizes itself to the size of your table. So it can come in handy in your work. I'll see you in that next video. Thanks for watching.